right, hello and welcome to another Rottler Tech Tip. Today we're working on the EM105 and we're doing some diesel work uh, on an over, road, over the road block, a Packard block. And we're gonna talk a little bit about doing counter bores and specifically circular interpolation of counter bores. Now, you may have heard of circular interpolation, uh, you may be using it already, or you may have always wondered what it is. Um, Interpolation is kind of a fancy way in general of saying approximation and when we circular interpolate something what we're really saying is we're going to let the machine move in two axes and kind of approximate a circle. Now it approximates the circle very accurately and very precisely uh, down to under a thousandth of an inch which lets you create circular features, counter bores, or bores, or any type of hole um, that you may be not having a tool that's the exact size of that hole. Um, where that would be useful is something like a counter bore, or uh, maybe you have just a one inch hole, uh, and if you don't have exactly a one inch drill or a one inch end mill, uh, you can interpolate it with a smaller tool, but still create that diameter. The other place where it's useful is on an application like this in the diesel remanufacture settings where you have a wet liner, uh, usually that counter bore has a, what's sometimes called an occluded feature where the counter bore, there's a lip to get down to that counter bore. Now you wouldn't be able to just plunge straight down with a boring bar because you would have to machine away that lip. So the only way to get underneath there and actually get the face of that counter bore is to use a smaller tool and interpolate around in there. So I'm gonna bring the camera in here. Uh, the, the tools you need to do this is you'll need a Rottler machine that has the ability to interpolate in two axes. So any of our 100 series machines, 79s, 69s, they can do that. Um, you're gonna need our, our, a probe and you're going to need the, uh, one of our boring bars that has the uh, 12 degree insert in it which holds the insert I bring it in here holds the insert so that just the tip of the insert is going to be cutting this holds it at 12 degrees and and basically that's a single point this so as this spins around the machine moves in a circular fashion and that lets you create uh, uh, the counter bore face so uh, I'm gonna bring the camera in. I want to talk a little bit about the setup of this. Uh, today we're using our mid-range diesel fixture. We have our locator system uh, and our clamp towers. So let me bring this in, talk about the components. So here on our 105, we've got a set of parallels, jack screws to support the end of the block. This stanchion right here, this is our mid-range diesel fixture. So we have a stanchion, which has a cradle, and then we have our locator. You can get various size locators. Now the important thing to note is these locators have a flat section on the top and they're pinned. And that's actually there for when you level the block, if you need to get some adjustment left to right along the length of it, you can take this pin out and then use it to twist this locator and that's gonna change the tangent point in the main bore. And by doing that, we can actually lift the block a little bit. Leave that in for now. Clamp arms, the way these work, they can slide in, you can set them and forget them. So once you get them set for one block, when you release them, you can slide them out, pull your block out, drop the next one of the same type on. Makes for real fast changeovers. And we got the same thing on the other side. This mid-range diesel fixture is ideal for anyone doing uh, over the road type stuff. You can even do light truck uh, automotive size stuff. But because those locators locate on the main line and have that ability to adjust when you're setting up, it uh, gives you a lot of flexibility. And I'll Here you want to be uh, a bubble level, uh, either a Rottler supplied dual axis one or one of these Starrett ones, uh, single axis, but it may be good enough. Uh, do front to back first, adjust the jack screws, clamp the block down, and we can do left to right. We can adjust those cam lo the main bore locators if we need to. Now going beyond that, sometimes it can be useful to also take the magnet scale or a dial indicator and sweep across the block. Um, gives you a little more information, takes a little longer to set up. 
So depending on what you're trying to accomplish and what the tolerances you have to work into, uh, you may use one or the other system, either level or the indicator, or you may use both. So for your rough setup, put the bubble level on here. Now I'm high in the front, so I'll just adjust it down. I'm going to go ahead and check left to right. A little high on this side. I'm going to take a bar, pull my pin out right here. Okay. I'm going to leave the pin up. Now what I usually like to do is, is I will leave it just a little high in the front. Just a few marks on the on the bubble level. So that when I tighten down the cam clamps, I can pull it down so I've got good clamp pressure and also get everything level. So now, I've got that all, all set up, we can get to go with the level. Um, and depending on what I'm doing, if I was just doing straight bores, that's probably good enough, assuming my machine's level. And just to show the other thing, I already got the magnet scale, I like to clip it up on the fly cutter. I'll just tram this across. Okay, so I'm a little bit higher on this side. So I'll adjust my main load. So I've done the x-axis, I'm going to just go right uh, back and forth in y now. About two tenths according to the scale, four tenths end to end. So that gives me a little bit more accuracy sweeping in, it just takes a little bit more time. So that's about it for setting up one of these blocks uh, on a mid-range diesel fix. And, and once you have your clamp arms adjusted and everything, if I was doing the next block, you know, say I finished cutting this, Loosen these clamp arms, pop that out, load the next one in, bubble level, sweep, very, very quick. Can swap over between blocks under 10 minutes, floor to floor time. So check out the next part. We'll go over the programming, 
uh, show you how to set up the tool for some circular interpolation of these counter bores, talk a little bit more about this specific block and why we're doing it that way, uh, and then we'll get to cutting. Take care, guys.